Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the unboxing of the Realme C1. So guys, this is the box and you might be wondering why I was so late. Well, this is not a review unit and it took me all this time to get this phone. I'm probably the last person to unbox this phone, at least online. Anyway guys, this is a phone from Realme. It's called the C1. It's exactly like the Realme 2 with just a few changes. Now this is the box. On the front it says simply C1. At the bottom it says Realme. It has some kind of a branding look going on. For Realme 2, Realme 2 Pro and Realme C1, the box packaging or the coloring itself is entirely the same. So on the front it simply says C1 and Realme at the bottom. On the left side and right side once again it just says Realme C1. On the back we have just bare minimum information like IMEA numbers, product related information, color. By the way this is the mirror black color and it also says made in India. Now that's all we get at the bottom over here we have some more information like shipping and manufacturing details but we won't be needing that. Now without any further delays let's just get on with unboxing. Now this phone is sold only in one variant exclusively online on Flipkart with 2 GB of RAM and 16 GB of storage at 7000 rupees. It's available in two colors mirror black and navy blue and as I've said I have the mirror black color. By the way guys as you can see there is no seal at all. I'm kinda scared while unboxing phones without a seal. Especially these phones and Apple phones. They should really have some kind of a seal. So guys now that the box is open at the top we have a plastic box kind of a thing with Realme on the front. And this is how we can open it. Over here we have the SIM card ejector. That's followed by a soft silicon pouch, which I really appreciate. Next, we have regular documentation. Next, we have the phone itself, which I'll put aside for a minute. Now, this is the 5 watts power adapter and it is made in China. It clearly says so over here. Now, I really don't get it why companies just can't give us a 10 watts power adapter. I'm pretty sure it doesn't cost a lot and it will just charge your phone faster, especially as this phone has a pretty massive battery. Anyway, over here, we have the regular micro USB charging cable. And that's all we get inside the box. So let's put that aside. Now this is the phone on the front. It's pretty plain. It is just packed in a plastic wrapping. On the back it has the IMEA numbers and that's all. Over here it also gives us a basic layout of the SIM card tray. It also comes with a dedicated SD card slot which is pretty cool for the price. Well not so cool because all the brands are offering that. So here we go. So this is the IMEA number sticker. So this is how the phone looks on the back, this is a mirror black and I'm pretty sure navy blue color looks much better than this phone. Anyway I just got this so I have to live with it. Now this is how the phone looks on the front. It also comes with a free screen guard reapplied which is a super nice gesture and I wish all the brands do it once again. Now without any further more delays let's have a quick physical overview and then check out the specs. On the back this phone has a fiberglass with 12 layer nanoscale composite material which gives it a diamond glossy finish. Well, that's what the product page says. It doesn't look all that reflective and personally, I would have preferred something like what we have seen on the Realme 2. Anyway, going on next, at the top, it has a dual camera setup with a 13 megapixel primary camera with f2.0 aperture, face detection auto focus. That's followed by a 2 megapixel secondary camera for depth sensing. That's to take portrait shots. Now on the front, it has a pretty massive 6.2 inch IPS display with HD plus resolution in the new 19 is to 9 aspect ratio with a notch. It has 88.8% .8 screen to body ratio with bezels as slimmer as 2.05 mm. And to top it all off, it even comes with a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 3 for protection. Now this is the first phone in the Indian market to come with a display notch at just 7000 rupees and it's also obviously the cheapest phone right now that you can buy with a display notch in India. Now with that said, inside the notch it is an 8 megapixel front facing camera with 1.12 micron pixel size with f2.2 aperture followed by earpiece and some sensors. And at the bottom it is completely plain with a very small chin, probably the smallest bottom bezel in the same price segment. Now coming to the sides, on the right side it has a power button, on the left side it has a volume rocker along with a sim card tray that can house two nano sim slots along with a dedicated SD card slot. At the top it is completely plain and finally at the bottom it has a mono speaker on the left side followed by the micro USB charging port, primary microphone and a 3.5mm audio jack. Now coming to the rest of the specifications, under the hood this phone sports a Qualcomm Snapdragon 450 processor with Adreno 506 GPU with 2GB of RAM and 16GB of storage with SD card support up to 256GB. This phone will be running ColorOS 5.1 based on Android 8.1 Oreo 
and it has a huge 4230 mAh battery. Even though this phone has a massive battery, this phone has a thickness of just 8.2mm and weighs just 168 grams. For a quick reference, Redmi Note 5, Note 5 Pro and almost all the phones with bigger batteries weigh almost 180 grams. And compared to those phones, this phone is actually lighter and obviously feels much lighter. Now besides that, this is also one of the few phones right now which support dual SIM with dual 4G and dual OLTE. It comes with all the basic sensors including a compass but it is missing a fingerprint scanner. Considering the price, it is kinda manageable. Now this is the free case that we got inside the box so let me just put it on and show you how it looks like and if it offers any kind of protection. Just give me a second. It's pretty hard to apply. Okay, I'm done. So guys, this is how the phone looks with the case on. It has a raised lip for the camera module and even for the display. So even if you put your phone directly on its face or put it on its back, camera module or the display won't get damaged. And as I've said, this phone also comes with a free tempered glass pre-applied. So that's a pretty great thing. Now at the bottom, this phone even has a flap for charging port. So if you use it or if you intend to use the case, it might give you some water resistance as well. It's not going to be 100% but something is definitely better than nothing. So guys, now let me turn on the phone and see what we get right out of the box. So guys, I'm just going to register my facial data right now. Now it's done. So guys, setup was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Probably the fastest I've seen in the few days. So guys, this is how the phone looks once we turn it on. I've signed into my Google account and I've just downloaded one application, that's CPU-Z. And as you can see, there is a bit of bloatware like Facebook, UC Browser, Amazon and so on. Now you might be wondering why all these apps that you didn't install are on your phone. Well, all these companies like Facebook, UC Browser, even Opera Browser pay some commission to the brands so that their applications get pre-installed. So that's the reason you see all this bloatware pre-installed on your phone. Now let's check the amount of free RAM and storage we get right out of the box. Now this is the CPU information, this phone has a Snapdragon 450 processor, it's an octa-core processor with 8 Cortex-A53 cores and these are all the frequencies that those CPUs are working on. Now out of that 2GB of RAM, we have about 746 MB of free RAM right out of the box. And out of that 16GB of storage, you get about 7GB of space for your user apps and user data. Now that's definitely not sufficient for a normal user, but if you're a very basic user who wants to use a phone for calls, messages, WhatsApp and Instagram kind of stuff, very few applications, then that space is manageable. Now this phone does come with a dedicated SD card slot, but we can't move applications to the SD card. So if you're a normal user who wants to install a lot of games and a lot of applications, then you will run out of space pretty soon. But for a very basic user, the storage will be sufficient. Now let's check the about page. So guys, this phone is running ColorOS 5.1 with Android version 8.1.0, that's Oreo, with a security patch. I've already connected this phone to my Wi-Fi, so let's see if there is any new update. So there is no new update right now, but it might get it pretty soon. Now let's check out the camera interface. So this is the camera interface for the red camera, the same one we have been seeing on other Realme and Oppo phones. You can swipe left or right to change between different modes. You also have the portrait mode that uses this dual camera setup. And we can just take a portrait shot, there's no option to change the background blur effect like Honor and Samsung phones. Now let's check the interface for the front facing camera. So this is how the front facing camera looks like. Initial impressions, it looks okay, kinda good. And that's all I wanna say. Now this one also has auto HDR for the front facing camera. And it even has portrait mode for selfies. So that's pretty good. Now these are some sample pictures taken using the front and rear cameras along with some portrait shots. So guys, now let's test the speaker loudness.
Neil from Greedy Tech and this is a very quick unboxing of the ASUS Zenfone Lite L1. Now this phone will be launched today, I have got the review unit and this phone has a price MRP price of 7200 rupees and this should be priced up. So guys even the vocals are pretty good, overall speaker loudness is impressive, probably the best in the price segment and it is sufficient for media consumption, ringtones and alarms. Now as you can see I can do a pin gesture to go full screen and unlike most phones even the notch area is being covered so you are getting a complete experience and you are not missing any screen real estate. Now Oppo phones have an interesting feature near the notch area. While watching videos on YouTube or using applications in the full screen mode or while playing games you can swipe down over here and you get these shortcuts. These are called quick applications and these are called quick actions. First one is to start video recording. So that's how it starts. You can stop it from here once again. Next we have an option to take a screenshot. Finally we can block heads up notification. This is something I really appreciate. Now these are the quick applications. Right now we just have messenger but once you install whatsapp even that will be listed over here. And once you click that application that app will open in a floating window and you can use this application and watch the video at the same time. So that's like a unique feature on the Oppo and Realme phones. Now there is no fingerprint scanner on this phone but we have face unlock, I've already set it up but I need to make one little change so that phone unlocks immediately. So for some reason by default even when I'm using face unlock like this, I'm still at the lock screen. I have to manually swipe up to unlock the phone. I don't want that, I want to immediately unlock the phone. So I'll just select this particular option. So whenever I try to unlock the phone, I don't see a lock screen. Now in this place we also have this toggle so once you enable it your phone will not unlock if you close your eyes. Now let's try it out. Right now this is what the front facing camera is looking at, I'm not wearing any glasses. So let's see how it works. Now the phone is locked, by the way these are the well lit conditions and it is unlocking pretty quickly. There's no lag whatsoever, I'm not even able to see the lock screen. Lock screen, unlock. It is pretty fast. Now I'll close my eyes and see if it will work or not. And as you can see it's not working if I close my eyes. So that's a pretty good thing. Now I'll be wearing my glasses and then see if it will unlock or not. And it still unlocks. It is slightly slow probably. Now it is still pretty fast. With glasses on, face unlock is slightly slow just by few milliseconds. But that's completely manageable. Now let's test face unlock in low lighting conditions. Now these are low lighting conditions, there are very small bulbs all around. So even in low lighting conditions it works and it is pretty fast. Now I am able to see the lock screen but still it is working so that's pretty good. Now I have turned off all the lights so let's see if it works. It's yeah it worked but took pretty long time like 2 seconds, 2 to 3 seconds. So guys even in complete darkness it works but make sure your phone can see your face properly especially the front facing camera. So guys in complete darkness it is taking like 2-3 to three seconds but compared to other phones this one is pretty impressive. Now these are the anti 2 and Geekbench scores. Now coming to my initial impressions, phone feels pretty lightweight even though this one has a pretty huge battery. I'm not sure about this metal rim all around but it feels like metal. These buttons are probably made of plastic but they are sufficiently elevated and have a nice tactile feel to them. That's something I really complain about almost all the phones, especially the Nokia ones. Now coming to the display, it looks pretty good, like it has a massive display for just 7000 rupees and that's really insane. Now coming to the entire software experience, so far it has been pretty smooth. I really can't believe that this phone just has 2GB of RAM because everything was pretty snappy and pretty smooth. Now compared to other phones in the same price segment, this phone is offering a Snapdragon 450 processor. So even though this phone has no storage, like very low storage, you should have better gaming experience on this phone when compared to other phones like the Redmi 6A or even the Asus M1 because it just has a better processor and better GPU. And coming to the battery life, it has a very power efficient processor and even the OS optimization of ColorOS is pretty good. So you will have pretty good battery life with this phone. So guys to conclude, if you want my recommendation to buy a phone at 7000 rupees, I'll definitely recommend you the Realme C1. Well not for everyone, if you are a very basic user like if you just want to make calls, send messages and use WhatsApp and Instagram like 4 to 5 applications, then you can definitely buy this phone. But if you are a heavy user or normal user who wants to play games and do stuff like that, then I would recommend you to spend a little more and get the Realme 2 instead. 
that will be a much great value for money. You will also get a fingerprint scanner, 3 GB of RAM and 32 GB of storage, which will be sufficient for all your apps and even games. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Will you buy it at 7000 rupees or spend more and get Realme 2 instead? Or is there any other phone out there that I'm missing out which offers better value for money or better features than this phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description, it always helps the channel. And if you want me to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and I'll try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off, have a nice day.